Hello. In this presentation, I'll briefly explain what deep reinforcement learning is and evaluate a particular form of it, the actor critic method. As with many deep reinforcement learning methods, the agent, or in this case agents, will be trained to optimize their problem solving ability in order to maximize their accumulated reward. This self-optimizing, reward-seeking behavior is particularly useful where the amount of data is complex, dynamic, extensive, and sequential. Deep reinforcement learning is increasingly being applied to highly complex and dynamic data sets where stochastic optimization techniques either can't be applied or don't perform as well. The financial services sector is currently undergoing a transformation, largely due to the efficiency and power of reinforcement learning and because data scientists are discovering and learning to use new methods, simulation environments, and models at a rapid pace. The key to deep reinforcement learning's advantage is neural networks, deep neural networks. With enough data and given the task, these networks can self-optimize to reproduce the functionality of many supervised and unsupervised learning techniques, and with much less compute required. Early implementations of the actor critic method use two separate deep neural networks, one for abstracting the policy function and one for developing the value function. Here we have an example of how recent implementations use a single network to extract values for both functions. The actor's policy improves as the model's ability to evaluate itself improves. In A2C, many instances of one agent act in the same environment. Their actions inform the credit network, which periodically passes the same weighted update to all of their policies. The advantage of this is a faster exploration and quicker optimization of exploitation, since we have multiple workers finding changes in sequential data at once. This synthesis also reproduces the effect of a gradient descent. Here's what that looked like on some stock market data. Each line is a particular stock and follows the progress of one whole model as it moves through. All the agents are all each fine and they're accumulating money. That's what the episode reward is. Most of the early ones are closer to the zero, but as I continue to train, we got closer and closer to say 20, an average of 20 per reward. To perform this evaluation, I pulled data from a stock market API called Alpha Vantage, along with some commonly used technical indicators that offer analysts a means of gauging stock market actions and trends. Speaking of trends, I didn't have to detrend my data since maximizing reward is what we're doing. And also because we're not trying to replicate it to noise pattern, we're learning to navigate. I used every tech stock, I used every tech stock in the Dow Jones that was public and on market by early 2012. And I used 2012 through 2018 in three segments as training data, followed by two years of validation, leaving 2021 as my test set. I was able to take advantage of and improve upon the code from earlier projects, making them easily accessible throughout the application. Now that we've prepared the data, we need to instantiate and compile the agent and environment we'll be using. During the course of this project, I am discovered a few networks of libraries supporting a particular architecture for reinforcement learning. For example, there's a cluster of libraries that operate well with OpenAI, in particular, the OpenAI Gem. I used the AnyTrade library since its environments were compatible with the agents implemented in an earlier version of the Stable Baselines library. Stable Baselines offers a good selection of the newer methods, but watch out if you don't have TensorFlow 1.15. For each cohort of stocks, the model iterated with all the agents through each stock's market history, learning to make a profit. And finally, here are just a few of the first few runs on a never before seen stock. This is Tesla, by the way. Towards the end of Q4 2020, it, it led a massive sell-off in the tech sector. So I'm curious about the activity in that period. There's also some interesting activity leading up to March during the beginning of what became a massive sell-off, early signal. 
Here we have a table breaking down for visual analysis, a monthly and yearly return. Something I'd like to look at in the future is maybe adding a lot more features that aren't from the stock market API. Maybe politics or rhetoric using the language analysis perhaps to develop another, uh, another feature. Anyway, thanks for watching my presentation.